Hello, hello, hello. Cheers, Kevin here. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to Cheers, Kevin Games, where we've been doing a lot of series. We've been doing a ton of series, and I felt like taking a break from doing series. I was uh, on Reddit, and this stumbled across my front page, this link. This is uh, codinggame.com, I think. I've got this full screen. I don't want to make it not full screen, because then I don't remember what other tabs I have open in the background. Probably lots of porn and banking information and my security number. I don't know. Whatever it is. Um... <laughs> Anyway, there was a link to this website. Step up your coding game. This is coding game. Yeah, it's coding game dot com. There we go. If we hover over it. Yes. www.codinggame.com. And I looked at this for like three seconds and I was like, let's make a video out of this. Step up your coding game. The new way to improve your programming skills while having fun and getting noticed. I would like to have fun and get noticed. That sounds awesome. And video games and code. Those are kind of my things that, that you know, that's kind of what I do. Let's get started. All right, so this loads up. Welcome to the onboarding. Coding game. All right, so it's coding. Coding game, like Snowden. Okay, coding game lets you improve your coding skills with games. It all starts in the IDE, where you will code and test new ideas. I've got it. I like that there's this part of the I IED. Or the I IDE, wow. All right, this is your mission statement. Solo and multiplayer coding games are turn-based. Each turn, your program gets new inputs and must output the action. Okay. Got it. Choose a programming language. You can choose a language you already know or learn a new language here. Ever tried Go? Ugh, no, not Go. Let's do this in... I kind of want to do this in JavaScript because then I could build like web... web-based OpenGL stuff. That sounds like fun. Or WebGL stuff, rather. Okay. Let's tell your pro... Let's... Yes. Let's tell your program to shoot the closest alien. Copy-paste this code at the right place in the code editor. All right. All right, so game loop. Well, true. So forever, enemy one equals read line. The name of enemy one. Just read what? What? Oh, copy this into here. Copy this in the right into the code here. Oh, it's okay. So copy this. So this is how you write code, everybody. You copy and paste things there. Okay, so what is this actually doing? Enemy one is read line. I don't read. Re, okay, read line is something we'd presumably type in or we get from a stream. Dist one is the distance of. The next read line. So this is going to be getting some input from somebody, whether it's like a console that we types in, and we're assigning these to variables. So first we get the enemy, then we're going to take whatever somebody types in and turn it into a number. Enemy two is going to be whatever this is, and then disk two is what we get there. So then we'll say, okay, if disk one is less than disk two, print enemy one. Okay, print though. Why are we using print? That's this that if this is JavaScript, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge. If dist one is less than dist two, then print enemy one. Okay, so this is just going to select which enemy is closer because we're having, we're getting enemy one, we're getting distance enemy one, enemy two, and a distance enemy two. We're saying if the distance to one is less than distance to two, then we're going to attack enemy one. So, yes, we want this to shoot the closest alien. That's part of our rule. Let's check our code. Games have test cases to make sure you've solved it properly. No, they don't. Maybe if you make test cases for them, that would be really awesome if games just like automatically made magical test cases. Run your code by playing a test case. Okay. Play test case. Watch your code. Perfect. Your code destroys the closest alien on each game turn. Look at that. I'm a game dev, guys. That's awesome. I've always wanted to be a game dev. I've never wanted to put in the effort to be a game dev at all. That seems like way too much work. But uh, yeah. Being a game dev would be cool. You're ready to learn code and play. Submit your solution to verify the robustness of your program in different situations. Now let's play more advanced coding games. Okay, submit. Oh, I gotta sign up and start playing for free. Okay, I have... <laughs> I have done that. Good. Okay. We are computing... I have a report. Wow, so I'm gonna, like, learn... This, this is a whole, like, community. Again, I'm, it's loading a computing score. Yeah. I score 75 in computing. All right, let's... Oh, we are establishing a secure connection. All right. Probably, I think I'm actually uploading videos in the background. We may have, this may take a moment. What is, okay, your program must join the MS Wait, So this is, is this, oh, so this is showing each of the turns. Got it. Okay, so this is going through, oh, interesting. So yeah, while well, this is figuring out what it wants to do. So this is, so the program must do this, but we can actually advance through the turns and then the animation is actually doing the tweening of of that. But what we're programming is just the rule stuff. And so it's got down here. Can I can I resize these, please? No. I can full screen that. Ooh, full screen. Hurrah. Press escape to end. <laughs> of course, I'm full screen in full screen because I already have the browser full screen. 
Um, oh, and we can change this to other languages. Interesting. Okay, cool. So we can test out multiple different languages. So I guess this is probably less of a, oh, here's how you do OpenGL, and more like, hey, we're going to use this game as an excuse to look at some programming skills. Right, what the heck is going on? What is this? Oh, these are people talking. All right. Hi, people talking. Um, where was that menu we were looking at? Huh? Results, form, hints. Right. Oh, congratulations. We have reached level two. Oh, my gosh. There's a whole achievement system. We are a JavaScript explorer and onboarding master. Let's keep coding. Yes, coding games. Submit. I did not test my answer. Do I still want to submit? Oh, right. No. Okay. We'll keep coding. So this is Python. We're importing sys and we're importing math. We get an int. So I'm going to assume we do the same thing if dist1 is... Okay, so we have to print out the name to shoot the right enemy. Okay. If dist1 is less than dist2... Uh, oh, yeah, we don't need those, I don't think. Nope, because Python does not need those. We'll print enemy1. Else, print enemy2. Let's test that. Check again. Oh, check. In progress. Try again. No, a failure. Invalid syntax. Oh no. Just underscore. What what is the invalid syntax? To write an action using print. Debug print. What? What's the what's this button? I got an achievement. Huzzah for me. Um so, okay, so there's a syntax error some here. Oh, I don't remember. Um maybe I need to I think maybe I need to pull in here. I don't remember my Python. Aha! Look at that. It's shooting the nearest thing. Well, this is all this is doing is showing some comparison between the two. Yeah. Okay. Win. Congratulations. We did it in Python now, too. Hooray for us. We are super talented. It is loading our computing score again. I don't know what that means. And I've just discovered that I'm not recording this with the good microphone. Oh, because I don't, it doesn't recognize the SD. How does it not recognize the SD card? Load the computing score. I would like my computing score. All right, we've got JavaScript 100%. We've got Python something. Right, so this, I guess it's just going to take a while. Yes, yes. Oh, don't have an error. Dang it, I've got to turn off the freaking recorder thing. Let's do this in another language, I guess. Oh, gosh, we can do this in Pascal. What the heck? Okay, um, what's a language that I know, I know nothing about? Um, Rust. I know nothing about Rust. Um... I mean, I know some of the devs there, but I don't know anything about that. All right, so this is basically it's the same game. Um, the, okay, come on. I'm trying to... I'm bad at multitasking. All right, sorry. The audio is just going to be a little less awesome than usual. It'll still be awesome. We're still... We're super awesome. Um, and there's no system audio involved with this, so it shouldn't be a huge problem. Okay, anyway. Let mutt equal... No, nope, okay, it's not going to give us any information. Ba ba ba. So we want to say print lin, print line, presumably, um, the name of the enemy. I'm presuming we can probably do the same thing, right? This is defining some macros with, this looks very confusing. Let's input the same stuff. If, I understand it, let this two, okay. If, and this is going to read line and it's going to unwrap and then it's going to parse input. What does parse input do? Parse input. Does it turn it into a number for us? I think it does. Okay. Let's, oh, I'm fluent now. Okay. If just one is less than dist two. Um, I'm going to, yeah, because this looks like a curly bracy language. Man, okay, so Rust looks really wordy. All right, let's uh, print lin. Whoops. Print lin. Uh, enemy one. And semicolons? Yes, semicolons. Print lin. Enemy two, well, L enemy, enemy. Oh, I can't tab to autocomplete, right? Because this is not Vim, Kevin. All right, um, check this. Check our test case. Nope, there's some error. Expected a literal. Expected a literal. How? What is a literal? Parse input print error. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. To hit to predict the plan, you can influence the code provided below the player. Game loop. An action user print line message. Um, yeah, and I suppose we can't just do, like, enemy one. No, we can't do that. We've got to find some way to turn this into... So, it is a string, but print line expects a literal. Why is it enemy one? That should be fine, though. Why is that? Nope, it doesn't like that. Is this gonna, is this gonna give me any hints? Probably not. 
Um, settings. Hmm. How do we turn this? Maybe, maybe these dollar signs. Oh man, I'm finally a noob at something. Nope. That's not make a little, that's not expected token. Um, what about quote plus? So try and force the thing to be a string. Quote. So basically an empty string plus this enemy one thing. Da, 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 da. Expected a literal. Why do you not have a literal? Let this too. Do these assign? Hmm. Interesting. Parse input. Yeah. I'm gonna have to look this up. I think. Right. Hmm. Maybe. Print line is not a is not a macro. Um. Yeah, I'll put something. There's a there's a lot of ampersands and stuff going on here. Read line, but input line. Unwrap. Oof. This is rough. See, it's saying so. You're saying it's expecting some literal thing, but this is a literal thing. Yeah. See, it's even it's even highlighting because the word is the same. I don't know why it's why it's so mad. Alrighty. Well, so much for Rust. Um, how are we? How is our progress? Do we need to do more things to? We got puzzle to cheap. Okay, we got it. Java Explorer settings results. My report. Oh, there we go. We have my my report. Next step. Ooh, okay. Improve coding skills with the following puzzle. What is what is the following puzzle? How long have we been recording? Also, because I have no idea now. Because this is usually my clock. Oh man, we're gonna have to wing it. What time do we? St I have no idea. All right, improve our coding. Um. Oh, so these are coding battles. Uh, okay, so we can join a coding battle and fight with other people. That sounds intimidating. Let's do a puzzle. The Descent. What will I learn? Loops. Solving this puzzle makes you understand the concept of loops and ways of retrieving maximum value. Ooh, this looks fun. This looks fun. The Enterprise ship is in danger, drawn toward the world of copyright infringement. All right, cool. Let's uh, solve it. That button looks inactive. That is poor design. Why is this one gray and that one is yellow? Uh huh? one of them more and why is this bar up here being all confusing and stuff that's weird alrighty so we have to oh so the enterprise has to destroy the mountain so that it doesn't crash into them aha uh -huh. okay that'll be interesting uh, can we start it loading bar come on maybe this is spot oh no I s okay it's it's still loading it's still doing something there we go okay nobody should wait Lose conditions. If your ship crashes into a mountain, or you provide incorrect output, or your program times out. Okay. Cool. Oh gosh, there are a lot of test cases here. Okay. So destroy the mountains before your ship collides with one of them. For that, shoot the highest mountain in your path. Rules. At the start of each game turn, you are given the height of eight of the eight mountains from left to the right. By the end of the game turn, you must fire the highest mountain by outputting its index from zero to seven. Okay. So this this logic we're not going to use Rust anymore because that looked awful. Let's use Ruby because I know Ruby and I like Ruby. Ruby's fun. Oh man, Ruby's so nice and readable. I like actually can we do Elixir? That'd be fun. Can we do No. We can't do Elixir. Can we do Haskell? We can do Haskell. We could do Lua. We probably should do Lua because I I don't know Lua either, and I'm gonna have I'm doing a whole series of Lua. Um Let's do the one with Ruby just because that'll be fun. Standard out to sync equals true. Do not remove! Um the while loop represents the game. Um okay, so the loop is the game. Eight times do mountain. And we're gonna get some sort of number, and we need to print out. Okay, so we need to just print out the highest number. Cool. Um, so eight times mountain h equals gets dot two i. Um, eight times do this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm not even gonna look at these helper things. So we have to print out the highest mountain and output its index. So eight times. I don't like that loop. Um, I think that's probably not super helpful. Let's see. Um. So eight times do this. It's just setting mountain h to a thing. Um, and we need to print out some number. Um, so what I want to do is I want to get both the index and... Actually, let me think. Um, how do we get the largest thing of an index? I forget. Uh, okay, so we'll say... Mountains equal equals... Um, yeah is an empty is an empty array and we'll say um eight times two and we'll do with an index actually no 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 um 
Can I assign the result of a for loop to an array? I think I can. All right, eight dot times do with the index. And then we'll say, um, oh yeah, no, we don't even need that. We don't even need, yeah, if I, whoa, what did I just do? What's going on? Um, yeah, so instead of, instead of doing this, we'll say uh, mountains, and then we can use the shovel operator, which is gonna put it in to the end of our array. Um, and then, let's see, I can do mountains dot max, and that'll give us the largest height, but I need the actual index of that. So um, let's see. So tallest height is that, and then mountains dot find index. Uh, let's see. Is it in there? Ah, tallest height. Close enough. Um, play that test case. Give it a shot. Sending mountains. What? Our program did not write. Oh, right. We didn't print. We didn't print out anything. Puts. Try again. All right. That's the first turn. Turn three. Now we're going to shoot the highest one, which I guess should be mountain. Oh, mountain one. Okay. I can't quite tell. Okay. So the enterprise is, this isn't the enterprise, obviously. It's running lower. Okay. I think we got it. I think we got it. Firing on mountain will only destroy part of it, uh, reducing its height. Aha. Uh -huh. So it could be that there are better strategies than um, than just attacking the tallest one each turn. Oh, well, no, it does say that that's the strategy that we're supposed to follow. Okay, fine. Let's play all the test cases and see see if we pass. Because now these are scattered mountains, and if we pass that, oh, it, it's running all of them very, very quickly. Cool. Nice. All right. All right. Come on, you can do it. All right, we are clear for landing. All of our submissions worked. We can submit that, and we have one. Of course, that's going to go do this whole computing score thing. Um, yeah, I guess we'll leave it there. This is an interesting idea. Like, basically just teaching you programming. I mean, the one thing... I'm I'm getting through this because I'm, I do programming a lot, and I already know some of the languages and stuff. This probably be could stand to have a little bit more handholding. Um, oh, no, there we go. There's there's some thumps, a little bit of the handholding. An infinite loop, read this. Um, one mountain each per line. A single line with one integer for the index of the mountain with which to shoot. Um, yeah, still, I feel like this is, this is probably this is the sort of thing where if you're using this to learn to code, you're going to have to have, like, cop, have another browser tab open and be like, how do I do any of this? I don't understand. Um, but yeah, this is a kind of a cool concept. Uh, let me know what you think of this. Is this something you would consider playing? I don't know. I think it's I think it's a cool idea. We may do more of this in the future if there's any interest, but I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and call it there. I think this was a fun sort of one-off to mess around with. We may do some, some more fun stuff uh, at a later point in time. Until then, I will see you soon. Cheers.